All right, what's the chip of the day? The chip of the day is an LM399, very, very, very famous chip. Very, very stable voltage reference, precision reference, um, used in everything. Almost every single five and a half, six and a half digit voltmeter is gonna have one of these in it for its voltage reference, okay? Um, so what voltage is it? You say, oh, it must be 10 volts, but now it's 6.95. <laughs> it's, it's an odd voltage. And that's because it, it, it balances out. They can make the most stable thing with this particular value of, uh, of Zener diode. So again, it's not an absolute reference, it's a relative reference. So you have to calibrate your, your instruments, but this will then keep it in calibration. It will stay there, okay? And uh, I inherited a bunch of, uh, of these guys. So uh, I'm able to actually take one apart. I've always wanted to see inside. I always assumed it was something like a TO5 can and then uh, some stuff inside, okay? And it kind of gives you a clue on the data sheet. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So it says, yeah, this is basically it. There's a, a Zener diode, okay? And then there's a heating element. So that's a lot, of, a lot of times the way that you make things stable. A lot of times you put uh, crystals in ovens, keep them warm to keep them from being affected by the ambient temperature, you put them at a high temperature and then a ambient won't, won't affect it. They're already kind of toasty. And so it has a heater element in it and it has a Zener diode element, okay? And so uh, I'm gonna open one up and what we should see is a Zener diode between these two pins and some, maybe a resistor or something, some heater element between those two pins, okay? So let's open it up. And the first thing is that this thing is way smaller than I thought it was. I thought the metal part was going to like fill up that that whole plastic part, but it's only a very, very small little part um, that's inside that big piece of plastic. And the big piece of plastic kind of has a big air gap in the middle of it too, right? It has, has two walls and like an air, an air uh, gap in between the two walls. So once you get it open and, and, and take a look inside, it's not two parts. It's one chip and it's one complicated chip. <laughs> okay. So that was really, I don't know. It was kind of a shock to me. I, 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 I mean, maybe I thought maybe the, maybe the heater was pretty basic and the Zener diode might have a transistor or something around it, but I didn't expect something this complicated. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the data sheet a little closer because uh, if you I've never read the data sheet before, so if you take a look at the data sheet, you'll 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 see that uh, you shouldn't be surprised at all. But you know, it's like guys never read the instruction manual, right? Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at. Uh, let's take a look at this page. So here we go. It says here's the temperature stabilizer, and here's the reference. So. Wow, um, it's complicated. The, 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 this is just the heater and, and, and temperature control, so it stays at a fixed temperature. So it has its own reference. It has its own Zener diode, so it knows to stay within its bounds. And then the reference has a whole bunch of stuff around it to keep it happy. So then, very interestingly, these are on the same piece of silicon. So it's just one piece of silicon. Um, so yeah. A lot different than a lot different than I thought it was going to be. Uh, very interesting. All right. So before we turn one on, uh, it's going to be kind of boring. But before we turn one on, I want to talk about the uh, the the specification that you really care about. Okay. And it's it's this one right here. Okay. It's guaranteed 0.5 ppm per degree C temperature coefficient. So let's talk about what what, what that means. Okay. What does that what does it mean? So a lot of people don't understand PPM. PPM stands for parts per million. PPM, parts per million. And um, so how do you calculate parts per million? Okay, we're gonna start out with, uh, we're gonna start out 6.95 volts, okay? Parts per million is that we need to know what one millionth of this is, okay? What is one millionth of, of this? Well, we're gonna divide it by one million, okay? And that will be millionths. So 0.95, oops, 
6.95 and 1 million, 1 million divide is 6.95 microvolts. Okay, so 1 millionth of the Zener diode voltage is 6.9 microvolts. But the data sheet says 0.5 ppm, so that's one half. So we get to divide this by half. It's 3.47 microvolts per degree C. That means that if you calibrate your instrument at 25 degrees C and you use it at 30 degrees C, you have a five degree delta, okay? You have a five, a five degree delta. So you would take this number, multiply it by five, and you would get uh, 17.4 microvolt delta, okay? So five times 3.47 is 17. And so if you calibrated your instrument at 25C, but you used it at 30C, you're gonna have an error of 17 microvolts. That's pretty low. All right, so how do you use these things? Well, the good guys know how to use them really fanc fancily. Is that a word? Fancily. Um, so you can use them the easy way, which is what I'm gonna do over here on the bench, which is just hook up the heater and put a resistor across your Zener diode and measure the voltage. That's, that's what we're gonna do over on the bench. Uh, you can have plus and minus voltages heating it up. Uh, you can have positive in one, negative in the other, it doesn't matter. Then you can do fancy stuff like this, standard cell replacement. So it has a nice little section here to, to tweak the voltage very, very accurately. And then on some type of buffers, you don't really wanna use the output of the Zener diode without buffering it. You really wanna buffer it before, before it goes out, all right? But today we're just gonna grab a hold of pin one and, uh, and measure it. So let's take a look. Here's our part. Uh, there's the 399, and I have uh, 15, yeah, 15 volts going in. And I, you're supposed to use a 7.5k resistor. I just threw in a 10k because we're just doing something fun here. We're not being trying to be accurate. You use a 7.5k resistor to set a current into the um, Zener diode. So the there's a particular current that it makes it its most happy place. And 7.5K is, is good, but 10K is close enough for what we're gonna do right now. And we can go measure and see if it's stable. Is it stable? Uh, so my six and a half digit voltmeter can show 10 microvolts at its uh, most least, least significant figure. Anyway, um, you can see that it's kind of bouncing around there. So we are certainly, better than 10 microvolts of stability because um, we're kind of right on the edge between three and four. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a very good part. It's a very, very good part. But anyway, maybe we should sell these on eBay. Uh, yeah, I got a whole bunch of them. They're not cheap. I think they're about 20 bucks each or something like that. Um, so yeah, so that's... Uh, about $200, $200 worth of, uh, of chips right there.